Okay, people, welcome back to another whole oh, foosh play day. And it's been a little while, but that's mostly on me because I've gotten some unpainted casts and with my speed and I'm getting old, I'm getting kind of blind. I thought, oh, I can't do this play day until I paint this stuff, but you know who you are. If you sent me stuff, it will get painted, but the play day stuff was just piling up. So I thought I'll have a play day now. And then that'll be more stuff for another play day later. Because there was also stuff here I wanted to play with. <laughs> because, oh man, you guys send me stuff and it's just amazing work. I always say this during the play days, there are so many talented people out there. Seems like every time I turn around, I'll scroll Instagram, run into somebody new that I hadn't seen their work and it's just amazing, blowing my mind. And when I get to add a little bit of that to my collection or show it to you and you go get it too for your collection from these fantastic artists, it's a beautiful thing. I, I love doing it. And you've already gotten a sneak peek, so let's take a look at all this crazy stuff. Starting out with a couple of official releases. Is this Hasbro? Yeah, there it is. The Bounty Collection, the Child Grogu. Uh, it's a statue line that Hasbro puts out as kind of a, you like Grogu and all these cute little poses? Well, here you go. The figures themselves are definitely not 112 scale, but I saw somebody take this little fish tank thing from season two out of this and put it with their collection and I had to give it a shot. It's supposed to stay all as one piece, but is this a separate? Yeah, there's a peg or glue or something right there. Tried heating it up, it didn't break loose. What we're gonna do, we're just gonna cut the damn thing off. I mean, it was gonna be left with a pin anyway. I was gonna have to cut off, might as well cut it off at the source and save my fingers because ooh, you're left with the tank. Getting it beside a Black Series Mando, that's not bad at all. That'll work as a dial piece or to carry around, whatever. And may need to paint some of the details. The sculpt is there. Just need some wear and tear on the metal parts. But what's inside is the interesting part. It actually looks like the eggs are floating. There's some down on bottom, like there's a liquid. But it's just a clear plastic with some orange balls in it. Here's the Black Series Grogu beside it. That's so... I'm good with that. I'm completely happy. Speaking of Grogu, I saw this on the peg several times and passed on by. I'm not a vintage collection collector. I go after the Black Series, but then I finally stopped and looked. I haven't compared yet, so this is <laughs> happening as I go, but that looks about the same size as the Black Series with better proportions, I feel like. Plus the pram and a stand and the frog. Avert your eyes, those who do not open your packages. Does this... Oh, yeah. Look at that. I just happen to have the Black Series frog laying right here. This is the Vintage Collection. This is the Black Series. Uh, better paint on the Black Series, but about the same size. They fit together. Swivel at the head, looks like. No up and down. Just swivel at the shoulder, too. Here's the Vintage Collection. Here's the Black Series. Uh... <laughs> At least the first release of the Black Series. The, I think later releases had the white painted on. But I like the proportions of the Vintage Collection better. And the slight increase in size. Because again, bringing Mando in, this feels more appropriate. New Grogu for my shelf, I guess. I just fought the urge to say, here's a little badass diorama, but it's, it's not that little because it doesn't even fit on my camera. Would You Kindly Studios saw me talking, in, <laughs> as I do on live streams, about the upcoming Marvel Legends shirtless Wolverine and how I want it to be crucified up on an X. And he whipped this up real quick. Now it is slightly large, but at the same time, I feel like it needs to be that big in order to be prominent on the shelf. He's got these footholds, but I think when I get that Wolverine, I'm gonna get some toy chain or something to tie his arms and legs to the posts. But being this large, I can put it up on a shelf and then have figures in front of it without the Reavers or whoever I put up here blocking the scene and have my Outback X-Men hanging around to the sides, have Wolverine in the middle, I have a use for that shirtless Wolverine, it all works out. So I truly, truly appreciate it, would you kindly. Plus I love a good wood pattern, look at that. The stone on bottom, the dry brush making it look like granite. Oh yeah, I love it. I got another package from Gage or King Arthur Customs 95 on Instagram. If you remember back, he did those blue troopers, the foosh troopers and the logos and the flags and all kinds of craziness. And there's something to add to that. If you've ever wanted to picture Robo angry, I think 
Gage just nailed it. This is me when I've read too many, um, actually, you got that wrong. In 1984, this one appearance over here had Robo-Man. I just love that it is a blue Hulk, but he's got the bald head, he's got the beard, he's got the gray in the middle, have the foosh skull down here on the pants, and he's even included a couple of grip hands, or uh, grrr, hands. So this is Robo on a rampage, or this is one mean Papa Smurf. He's even painted some darkness under the eyes just to give it a little bit more depth to the face. Or that's me after editing videos for five, six hours. Robo hungry and tired. Got this package from Action Jack on Instagram and he says that this is necklace wire covered in colored hot glue to match. And then some were made just with wire and hot glue. All, all kinds of symbiote action features to add to it. And it always amazes me how hot glue can bend like this. I, I try to use hot glue and it just comes out a mess and it's all over me and there's those little stringies all over the place. Not these. These are pretty solid. Well, I say solid. They bend. Watch. Whoop. You can put them in all directions. And then of course you got your venom goo and that's, oh, there's weapons or well, kind of blades on the end. Am I blowing the focus because of that box right there? It kind of shoots out and does the carnage thing a bit. White for, uh, oh, anti-venom? Or what's the white one that we got? Was it a symbiotype? Was it Peter Parker? Oh, nifty, that one's got a well, Of course we got some carnage going on, look at that. I love that the red and the black is intertwined through there. The twist right here, I'm gonna leave that in. My first instinct was to strain it out, but I'm leaving it there, that looks awesome. And then there is this, which specifically says open on camera. What could it be? I, I, and I haven't opened this yet, so it is a surprise. Actually, it may be childproof because I can't get that damn thing open. I hope you have a spare beef boss body laying around. Oh, always, always have a spare beef boss. I probably have more beef bosses than any one person should. Robo meat rancid or beef rot. I made this head by hand, especially for you. Oh, what? Look at that. It's kind of a, a crazy zombie symbiote type situation happening. Made from epoxy sculpt, eyes and teeth are procreate and everything else is made of hot glue and wire. You're crazy hot. Like I said, hot glue is so difficult to work with. Damn, you've got pickles in here and crazy teeth and the eyes are going up. The color of the bun with sesame seeds. We are bifrot. We are rancid. I can't decide which name to use. Uh, crazy enough, this actually works into the storyline that I just started with the G.I. Joe stuff. That kind of works with the yellow tendril, doesn't it? It's staying like this. He's a symbiote of mustard and ketchup. Oh shit. I'm good with the black and red being carnage, but the red itself is now going to be beef rot. <laughs> You're in trouble now, mother of Rebel 10 Customs loves to spoil me, and I'm okay with that because she does fantastic work. But I'm used to cloth in the packages. This time around, she sent a 3D printed Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles manhole cover. Not only that, but the manhole cover actually comes off this ring, so I can sync this into a diorama, something else, and just have it to where I pop down, pop out, boop. But this is what I'm used to when I see a Rebel 10 Customs package. Here is God Doom with a replaced cape and hood. Now she did send along a couple of other pieces, but it's gonna be a little bit more work, like the skirt piece. I'll have to cut this one away from the belt. I haven't had time to do that, but just having the hood and this dynamic cape where I can put this anywhere, it makes me like this figure a lot more. What I'm probably gonna do here you see it kind of bunching up and trying to hit them in the face. I may glue this down in the front to where it stays in position and I can do things like this and this and this. And honestly, I, <laughs> I don't know what this is. I, I know it goes somewhere, but I'm, I'm missing it. Maybe that's the belt above the skirt and maybe I need to, I don't know, I'll keep playing. She also sent this replacement cape and hood for the loose collector Lady Death. The one that came with it is just a hard candy shell. It fits between the neck and the body. This, again, I may have to do a little bit of glue just to tack it down slightly. But she added a skull to the front right there. And then look at the inside fabric with the red. It's so shiny. And then on the back is a, a sheen on the black. But again, you can get dynamic poses. The wire in it is beautiful, works perfectly. I was actually displaying this without the cape because of the stiffness there. But now that I have this, this is how she's displayed. But then of course there's something Star Wars. There's always something Star Wars. 
Wars. Moff Gideon from The Mandalorian. Again, the Black Series had this just plastic cape, kind of rubbery, hanging off the bat. Rebel 10 Customs sent me this custom cloth one with wire in it. And the way it's designed in the show, it's an odd attachment. I actually have this just sitting on the shoulders. I don't have it attached, but it has stayed on through me carrying it from here to there, in here, out there. Again, you can add some dynamic to it. I may end up tacking it down right here. I haven't really had a problem with it as is. In fact, when I bring it down and wrap it around, it just adds so much to the figure itself. Now I need to put some dull coat on the face. I've been doing that here and there. That may be another play day. I have featured Mark II Designs Etsy store a couple of times on play days with the G.I. Joe weapons. They just come out looking awesome. They're realistic. Well, I got another package from him and look at this laser tag helmet. Okay, it may not fit Duke as well as it should because Duke has hair sticking up there. How about a rogue? Cobra Trooper. Will that fit all the way down? Oh, look at that. The print, the, the design of the logo and the red. Yeah, that's some memories. That's some nostalgia kicking. But what's the laser tag helmet without the laser tag gun? And he also sent that along. Look at the red stripe down the side. You guys ready for a game of laser tag? Also this, a Nintendo Zapper. Was that what it was called? The Nintendo gun that came with the original system? All I remember of this is Duck Hunt for hours. Pew, pew. But like I said, it always comes back around to Star Wars, and Mark designed this kick-ass e-web. There is some movement to pieces, but hell, just sitting here looking badass, I love it. The matte black really, really works, but there's also some silver that he threw on there just to bring out the details, like there's a little bit of wear and tear. And then the power source, the box, just a beautiful print. It's so clean. And then for the wire, I've got to do some gluing. This one stays in. I haven't been able to... Unless I'm putting this in the wrong spot, it should go there, right? I apologize, Mark, if I'm doing that wrong. But even that's a nylon cord, so I can put this anywhere I want, wrap it around, put it up in there. Just a great looking piece. I love the little holes and the details and the barrel and... Mm -mm -mm. It also seems to be appropriately scaled with Stormtroopers. <laughs> I also got a package from Rebo Bleedo on Instagram, or if you're on the Foosh forums, it's Rob Lowe. But he's also sent me a bunch of prints that need painted. And like I said at the first, I'm, I'm slow as hell. So I'm gonna show what he painted and something I did get finished. And then in a future play day, we'll look at the rest of it. There's the this and there is this. Wait a second. That's not 3D print, that's what is that? How the hell did you get the Here Lies Spider-Man slain by the hunter in here? That's why it was heavier than I was expecting. But, and now I need a Spider-Man to come up out of the ground. That's got me wondering now. But I was able to get Beak painted this week. He sculpted and printed the Beak head, the arms that plug right into the Jazzwares Fortnite Legendary Series abstract. My abstract also has these paint splotches on them here and there. You can see it just barely around the shoes. I was able to acetone most of it off and I have a beak for my shelf. When I saw this on his Instagram, I just had to ask if I could grab one. This was what I originally wanted and I just love those wacky X-Men. I figure it's gonna be a while before Hasbro gets around to Beak. I'm not completely happy with the paint job. I think I'm gonna go back and give it a, either a dark wash or repaint it with a dark base and then hit it with the lighter for just a little bit more contrast. Right now it's a bit bright and the details don't stand out. But Beak on the shelf, I couldn't be happier. <laughs> it's awesome. Always fun getting some casts and paint jobs from Corey at Casting Cave. I don't know how many Star Wars figures I've upgraded <laughs> because I've, I see them on his page and think, well, maybe Kylo needs a new head too. The SH Figure Arts Kylo head wasn't terrible, but I don't, Corey's just adds a little bit of extra oomph to it. The hair's a little bit more accurate. There's a bit more angst there. And then I like the eyes better. Just the overall shape and how it fits on this body. Yeah, it, this is how this is gonna stay. He also sent along this unmasked Boba Fett. And it actually took me a minute to realize that it fits on the new deluxe Return of the Jedi Boba Fett. I had the original Empire Strikes Back out with the huge neck ball on it, thinking, how the hell do I fit this on here? And then, I, yeah, okay, so I went back to this. It takes me a minute to realize things sometimes. But he also sent this angry Boba Fett. I can either have him as cool, calm, collected, or give me back my armor. Then there's also this Mythos Obi-Wan head and cloak set that he should have on sale soon. The head kind of looks like that in-between age from Revenge of the Sith and A New Hope. Just somewhere in there where he's in the desert watching over Luke, his Jedi robe has 
torn and tattered. He's lost the sleeves. And I've seen the pictures of where he has a big backpack and other things, but this is all I got at the moment. And this head was fit for the SH Figure Arts, but I may use the Black Series body, do a little dremeling, and fit it on there since I have many of those and only one Revenge of the Sith Obi-Wan. Harker Customs did the soft goods on this and I love the wires. It's a heavy wire that lays down if you want the deep hood look, but if you want it back kind of more Obi-Wan-ish, you can also do that. This is actually one of those things that I never knew I needed until I got it. And then I wondered why I never felt the need to need it in the first place. Does that make any sense? Bottom line, I, I've got another Obi-Wan for the shelf and that's amazing. And then finally, the box that tipped the scales on whether or not I was gonna do a play day today. When I first opened the box, this is what was staring me in the face. And there for a second, I thought some crazy bastard sent me a 1 12th scale, or at least close to a 1 12th scale at at But it's just the leg for diorama use. Not that I'm gropping because look at this big hunk of resin. This is from Landspeeder Luke on Instagram. And he says, started collecting two years ago. And then at the beginning of quarantine, bought a cheap 3D printer on Amazon and started messing around. This ain't messing around, buddy. This is impressive work. The sculpt itself, both sides, shading on it, bring out the detail work. Oh, actual articulation. This rotates down here and then the knee joint. It's insane. I cannot wait for it to snow again so I can have some snow pictures. And if you have a figure here and you're taking the picture and there's one leg, it completely works. It, it gives you the effect that there's more at at out of frame. But that's not all. I gotta go get the rest of it. There's the Hoth computer station and you can already see it. It's reflective. That's clear. Well, it's double layered and the details on one side and then kind of a screen on front. But look at all the buttons and the toggles. It makes me want to sit here. He says to put a light behind it for full effect. Let's kill this. Let's kill this. Let's kill this. I need a wider light, but oh, I can imagine LEDs or something behind it just more Hoth stuff. I can't complain. There's a set of Bad Batch chairs with different wear on them. I gotta think this is somebody who's really rough on their chair. This is Tech. This is Wrecker. Speaking of Wrecker, here's the gonk droid that he presses in some of the episodes, just lifting him up. Look at that. That's perfect. How about a big old throne of Mandalore? And I love the fade paint work. How it goes from bright out to orange, the paint jobs on these. It kind of got warped in shipping. I may have to heat it up or something, kind of straighten it out. But there's a piece behind that's painted and then this is an overlay to make the details sharp. The orange stands out nicely, bunch of sculpted detail, these dots and these lines that look very Star Wars-y. And once again, Hunter is gonna sit, since he's already in a sitting position, he's gonna sit on the throne. Look at that! Yeah, I need to get my Darth Maul situated or Bo-Katan, somebody. Finally, there is this. Crazy! This is actually modular. There's the sides, there's the top, there's this floor in the middle and then the door pieces. And I don't have it quite together. I need to do a little bit of sand work right there. It's holding it up so there's a gap, but still look at the detail work on the inside of the doors or over here where you have R2 or Leia working to get them open. And speaking of that, there's tabs to pull the actual doors open. They're on tracks. Get in there, there we go. Then he's also weathered it a bit with the lighter gray. Show some paint chipping. With this being in pieces like it was in the box, you can see how I thought there was a whole at at because <laughs> seeing the leg first, I thought this may have been the side. But once I got everything out and everything together, and I also read the note saying <laughs> it was all these different things, I was kind of sad that it wasn't a full at at, but at the same time, where the hell am I going to put a full at at? One leg completely works. I can bring it in, take it out, store it, pictures, dios, whatever. Not that I'm going to grab if we ever get a full size ad in or something. So at the end of the day, another fun play day. Like I've ever had one where it was just kind of, oh, well, whatever. Every play day is a fun day. If you're wanting to take a closer look at any of these items or grab something for yourself or just go over and show the men and women who put their heart and souls into stuff like this, just a little like, just a little love maybe a comment or two of great job, looks fantastic. All the links to the creators are in the description. Then you can have a play day of your own. You get to put unique things on your shelf because while I like collecting, I love buying stuff. The hunt and the companies giving us things, it's the little tweaks, the little add-ons, the little things that the big boys won't give us. That's what I feel makes a collection a little extra special. Or at least that's how I feel about mine. You may be different and that's cool, but for me, this just adds to the fun. So if you enjoyed this play day, comment, like, subscribe, and don't forget to click the links, go through. 
show some love. Much, much love to the plus if you're interested in seeing videos early or in a position to help out the channel, patreon.com. But wherever you may be watching this, I'll always catch you on the foosh. The problem that I have with this stuff, the only problem I have with this stuff, I need to find more room, especially for big diorama stuff like this or even something here. This makes me want an open thing and the Spider-Man coming out and Craven over here, but that's its own little display. I love this, but I'm gonna love finding a place for it even more. Terrible problem to have, I know.